Hey, 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 guys, we are live. I just want to make sure everything is up and running. Guys, we're live. Miracles do happen. I can do this on my own. That, that in itself is the most incredible of feats. But guys, we are live and welcome to the very first episode of the Property Sourcing Show with me, Danielle Bell. Now, guys, some of you will be familiar with me already. You know, I have a fairly accurate reputation of being a no holds barred occasional swearer i'm not sorry you'll probably figure that out on tonight's call so if you are easily offended this is not the show for you i will try my best to keep it pretty you know watershed airtight but i can't promise anything okay i do have a marmite personality guys but that's okay can't please everybody, um, I can take that on the chin, and you shouldn't try to please everybody, FYI. So guys, I'm really, really delighted to kick off this series for the community, okay? And I have only one intent for this show, the property sourcing show, okay? Which will be an extended series for, for as long as we can keep the momentum going. It's something I've been passionate about for quite some time. And my main aim and deliverable, guys, for the Property Sourcing Show is to give you guys in the community short, bite-sized and actionable points that you can take with you in the first not to 12 months of your property sourcing and investment journey. Nuggets of information, nuggets of value that you can move forward with and implement into your property sourcing journey. And the key word there, guys, absolutely is implement, okay? So... The episodes, guys, will not be long, okay? I don't believe that you need to deliver two and three hour episodes to give the value. Pack a punch straight from the start, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So the episodes will not be long drawn out. They will not be filled with useless, you know, air-filling waffle. They will not go on for what seems like an eternity, okay? Remember, short, bite-sized, and actionable information is what the premise of this show is all about. So with that in mind, guys, let's kick off tonight's episode with the topic, what makes for a successful property sourcer? What makes for a successful property sourcer? Now, this particular question, guys, came to me from one of the guys inside my membership at Property Sourcing Made Simple. And I thought it was a really, really good question. And I thought, okay, that's a good question that I can answer inside the members club, but I am pretty certain that there are quite a number of you in the community, perhaps on the call tonight or in the wider community who want to know, look, what makes for a successful property sourcer? Why is that person over there doing better than me over here? Okay, so good episode, good topic, especially because many in the field who are not making the progress that they feel they should be making, they're looking at their successful counterparts. And I'm trying to look, I have frozen neck or strained my neck today, guys. So bear with me, my movement may be limited, okay? But if you're looking at your successful counterpart and you're believing that the grass is greener, then you're wondering exactly what is the difference between them and you? What are they doing differently that you are not? So, let's start by making one thing really really clear okay excuses guys are on every street corner fact i have heard them all i have seen them all i have used them all okay i have done that okay once upon a time i used all those excuses you know it's an easy get out clause guys it's an easy default it's easier to say i can't because or i tried but Okay, it's easier to say those things. But trust me when I tell you guys that I was once that person. That's a fact. I was once that person. I still struggle with elements of my um, progress and personal development that I, that I make excuses for, but I recognize them now. So when I look back in absolute horror today at the excuses that I used to make, used to make when things simply weren't going how I would have liked them to at the start of my journey, which was three and a half years ago now, okay? So what common excuses, guys, do we hear the most in the wider community? There are a lot, to be fair. Like, let's be honest, let's not bullshit this. We hear a lot of excuses in the community, in this community, in the wider communities, they, they, they just seem to be everywhere. There are two, there are two excuses, two most pressing excuses that I hear a lot of. 
you'll probably know and guess what they are. I can't find any investors. I can't find an investor who wants to work with me. I have no one interested in investing with me. Okay, now to tell you that this is one of those shambolic excuses that really rattles my cage, and it really rattles my cage, that would be an understatement. Okay, there is an abundance of money out there, just so you know. There is an abundance of money out there. Okay, there is an abundance of potential investor clients out there. Okay, don't tell me that they don't exist. You won't be able to tell me that. Now, the second most common excuse or objection that I hear from people, and the first, again, it's not to 12 months of their journey, who are looking at their counterparts, who are doing better. The second most common excuse or objection that I hear is, I can't find any deals. I am equally as exasperated at that objection, okay? So let's address both of them in unison, guys. I can't find any investors. I can't find any deals. Here's my opinion. And it's only my opinion. Okay, please don't be offended. My opinion is my opinion. I am not saying it's gospel. I am not saying it's written gospel. I am not saying it's my way or no way. It is my opinion. And I'm expressing my take and my point of view on it. But there are relatively new, new property sourcers, deal packagers, and relatively new property investors out there who are finding investors okay and that's what we specialize in inside our mastermind group and finding investors and you claim that you can't there are relatively new property investors out there who are raising finance for their deals who are joint venturing with people they have connected with there are relatively new property sourcers deal packagers out there who are doing deals okay they are securing properties and they are earning money in this strategy. So tell me this, where lies the difference? And this is the question that we're going to go through tonight. Where lies the difference, quite literally, between the haves and the have nots in this sphere? So my viewpoint on this topic, guys, it's really quite straightforward, as you probably expected, okay? It's pretty black and white for me. So to those of you who are watching this either live tonight or watching this back, if you've been following my content for a while, my stance, which is stake in the ground, will come as no surprise, okay? To those of you who are maybe only starting out getting to know me and coming to terms with my brash attitude and occasional swearing, the attitude and the opinion may come as a little bit of a shock to you. So brace yourself for that, okay? But I've given you the caveat that I like to swear. I'm pretty hardcore get on board or get off okay so not get off but you know what i mean okay it is my opinion that the difference between what makes for a successful property sourcing journey and an unsuccessful property sourcing slash investment journey boils down to three key traits that you must have okay not maybe have not i think about it three key traits that you must have as an individual, I've said them before and I'll say them again. Listen, commitment, conviction, and consistency. Now, I get what you're saying. That all seems a little bit airy fairy, Danielle. That seems a little bit wishy washy, a little bit out there. If I could see you now, by the way, I can't. I'm looking at my Zoom screen on Facebook. But if I could see you right now, I would imagine there are some eye rolls happening. I don't care. I don't care because I'm telling you the truth, okay? So stick with me on this, guys, and let me explain how and where the commitment, the conviction, and the consistency play their roles in your property sourcing and investment success. Let's kick it off with commitment, okay? You quite simply do not need. Like, I, want you to, I want you to keep this in mind. You do not need to be the most intelligent person in the room. You just don't. You do not need to be the most educated, articulate, well-read sourcer or investor in the room, in any environment. That is not what will predict your progress, but your commitment to becoming the best version of you professionally absolutely will. Okay, so you have to commit to putting yourself out there. 
I'm sorry to have to tell you that, but you have to commit to putting yourself out there. Fully acknowledging, by the way, that at first it will be awkward. It will be scary. It will be uncomfortable. You will get it wrong more than once. Like, look what I'm doing right now. I'm fucking looking into a camp and I don't even know if there's anybody at the other end of this, but here I am putting myself out there to try and help you. You have to do the exact same back, okay? You will get it wrong where the ones nobody gives a shit. You need to know that. You have to commit to making it your business to attend networking events, okay? You need to make it your business to commit to tapping into your sphere of influence, to telling everyone within touching distance what it is that you do, okay? You have to commit to those things. You have to commit to building relationships. You have to commit to building partnerships. You have to commit to building friendships, okay? You have to commit to these things because these are the things that will move the needle. You have to commit to building a network around you that you can call upon at any time for anything. These are the things that will move the needle on your journey. Relationships with estate agents, commit to them. Relationships with letting agents, commit to them, okay? Relationships with valuers, commit to them. Relationships with auctioneers, commit to them. Are you getting my point? Commitment. Relationships with business owners, relationships with a more distilled sphere of influence, nailing down that ideal client, committing to finding out where they are. Am I hitting it home hard enough for you guys? Have you gotten the point that you need to commit to doing the things that you know will move the needle? Yes, it's a hot, a hot market at the moment. Yes, it is harder, but not impossible to get an estate agent to hand you over their loot. Yes, it's harder. I don't disagree with that, but it's not impossible. There are people out there doing that. The reality is, guys, exactly that. There are people out there in the community, in the wider communities, doing exactly that. One of the guys inside my members club, James. James has had more off-market viewings in the last week than I have had glasses of Prosecco. And you should know that I like my glasses of Prosecco, okay? I've had my fair share of fizz in the last week. Celebrating today as well. Sale on the flip agreed. Sale on our, resi our residential purchase a contract signed. So there's going to be double fizz in the bell house tonight. My point being here, guys, that he's getting these opportunities because he's committed to building relationships over the longer term that he knew would pay off handsomely. Okay. So let's get it straight from the off, guys. If you want to do well and progress, you need to make the commitment to do all things that come with this industry. No commitment, no urgency, no progress. Fact, no commitment, no urgency, no progress. What's the second thing we spoke about? Conviction. Another trait that you absolutely must have to secure some success and progression on this journey. It's the second of the three C's. It's easy to understand and it's easy to use. If you don't believe in yourself, if you don't believe in what you're saying, if you don't believe in the services that you provide and you sell, how the fuck can you expect anybody else to buy into you? You need to have conviction when you're speaking to the estate agents. You need to be convinced in what you offer. It's the first thing that would work, okay? Being pretty sold on what it is that you sell would be a good start. You need to believe in your business. You need to be oozing conviction. I mean seeping conviction from your pores in all your ventures, oozing conviction, okay? The exact same premise applies, guys, when you're dealing with potential investors, JV partners. So are you whispering what you do, what you offer and how and who you can help in a timid, unconfident fashion? A little indoor voice, you know, a little mouse voice? Or are you shouting from the rooftops what you can do who you can help and how you can help them with a great big lion's roar. Which one is it? Mouse or lion's roar? Okay. Now, if you want to see progress, which I assume that you do, just check it. But if you want to see progress and make a success of your journey 
It needs the lion's roar. You need the lion's roar, okay? So how you can speak with conviction or how can you speak with conviction on what you offer, what you do, what your services are, who you are. How can I speak with conviction, Danielle? Great, great question. Even if I did ask it myself, it's actually easier than you would believe, okay? Practice, practice. Repetition, guys, is a wonderful tool for honing any skill. Any skill, repetition. So the more times you practice the shot, the more times that you will score, right? That's statistics. It's not fucking rocket science. That's just basic maths. The more times that you take a shot at the hoop, the more times you're likely to get the ball in the hoop, okay? It's really as simple as that. So you need to practice, guys, calling agents. You need to practice your agent scripts, which are, by the way, vitally, vitally, vitally important. If you didn't check out my post in the group earlier on today about Alex and how he tweaked his, his script with his agents in relation to rent to rent, go back and read over it. Your scripts are really, really important, okay? You need to practice your elevator pitch, guys. If you haven't got an elevator pitch, by God, you better get one quick, okay? So by the time that we jump on episode two next week, you should have an elevator pitch. In fact, let's put a challenge out in the group right now on the live. Let's see how many people we can have perfecting their 60 minute, or sorry, 60 second, 60 minute, mm, 60 second elevator pitch over the course of the next week. Put your elevator pitches into the group, film them live, get them in there, write them. We critique them, okay? That's an action point for you. But you need to practice your elevator pitch time and time again. You need to practice your investor introductions time and time again. You need to practice your rapport building skills time and time and time again. You need to practice your networking skills. I cannot emphasize this enough, guys. So if you are a half-assed in your approach, you will get half-assed results. I mean, that's, again, statistics, okay? If you treat this job, career, business, and it is a business that you want to build. Remember, if you treat this business as a hobby, you're almost guaranteed to get hobby results, which by the way is fine if that's what you set out for. But the reality is most people get into property not because they wanna make it a hobby, but because they want to make a significant difference in their lives, in the lives of the ones that they love, okay? That's why people choose to get into property. Look at it in sports terms, guys. Professional sportsmen and women spent years, months, weeks, days, hours consistently, consistently practicing and fine tuning their skills to be the best in their field. Okay, so if you want to be the best, if you want to be as successful as the best, if you want to make the progress that the best make, then and be financially rewarded for it in return then you quite simply have to do what they do. Remember, guys, the most glaringly obvious statement that we see put out there all the time. And if you're into personal development books and self-development and you know building your business books, success leaves clues. Okay, take the clues, match them up, put the pieces of the puzzle together, follow it. It's a fucking roadmap. Okay, again, you don't need to be Einstein. You just need to be able to read a map, which I struggle with. I know my metaphor, I do struggle with maps. Point number three, the third trait you need to have to progress and have success on your property sourcing and investment journey in the first not to 12 months, consistency. Third and final of my three C's guys, and it is without a doubt, hands down, the single most powerful tool that you can have in your toolkit as a property sourcer. Consistency guys is what will weed out the flakes Consistency is what will imprint your name and your face on the minds of the people that you want to do business with. So that comes down to consistency with attending networking events, which are, by the way, all virtual now, so you have no fucking excuse not to be attending them. Don't even get me started on that, okay? It should be easier than ever to attend these events now. It should be easier than ever for you. So attending you know, networking events once or twice and then dipping in and out will not serve you well. Dipping in and out, okay, will not serve you well. You need to cover the long game. So my advice to you guys, this is a pretty actionable tip as well alongside your elevator pitch. My advice to, to any of the guys listening here tonight is to pick two networking events, 
okay? One property and one business and attend them religiously. Okay, you don't need, and here's the problem. Most people overcommit and say, yeah, I'm gonna do six, seven, eight. I'm gonna do nine. I'm gonna do 50 networking events this month. I'm gonna fucking smash it. I'm gonna be at 50 networking events this month. And then they get to number three and they're like, this is shit. I'm not doing this anymore. So don't overcommit and under deliver, okay? Make it really, really, really actionable. Pick two networking events minimum. Okay, one property, one networking, sorry, one property networking event, one business networking event, and stick at those two networking events religiously, month in, month out, month in, month out. Show up consistently every single month. You're, I, this, I promise you, because I am the, um, I am the host of a networking event in Belfast, so I know the strategy and I know who the faces are. Okay. I know the faces and the names of the people who come to our event every single month. I know the faces that show up every single month. I know the faces that are in the breakout areas. I know the faces that are in the breakout rooms. Why? Not because I'm really good at remembering names because I'm not, but because they've been consistent. So I've got to know them, okay? Do that, two networking events, one property, one non-property, show up consistently every single month your name and your face will become recognizable and what will happen is people will just expect to see you there as it goes on okay consistency with the contacting of your agents is also vital i see so many guys guys novice property sourcers who aren't seeing instant results after a month or two really and immediately throw in the towel now this is not the attitude to have in case i haven't made myself clear okay this is not McDonald's. You've heard me say that before. There is no fast food fix. The magic is in the consistency, okay? I tell all the guys inside my private mastermind that they must touch base with their agents twice a week, okay? Twice a week. There is no negotiation with me on that. It's twice a week and it's every week, okay? Why? Why? Because reputation, repetition, should I say, coupled with consistency, breeds confident delivery. Let me say that again. Repetition, coupled with consistency, builds confident delivery, okay? So, and it actually, it paid off really, really well for Dan G, if he's listening tonight, shout out to Dan G, inside my mastermind group. So he told us on Monday night that an agent he had been courting, dating, metaphorically, not really, hopefully, that an agent that he had been courting for eight weeks contacted him on Monday with a property that had fallen through. Boom, semi-result, okay? And asked if he'd like to view it. Told him what the vendor was likely to come down to, which wasn't a million miles away from Dan's original first offer. That's a result, that's a result, okay? Now, would that have happened if Dan made one or two half-assed touch points with the agent? No, it wouldn't. It happened because even when they had nothing to offer, he stayed front and center. So that when the opportunity did arise, his name was at the forefront of the agent's mind. Consistency with your social media posts, guys. Okay. Consistency with your lives, consistency with your content. It's all relevant and it's all massively, massively important. I can't stress this enough to you guys. I cannot stress this enough to you. Consistency with your viewings, your direct to vendor marketing, your income generating tasks in your business, which as a side note, by the way, there are only two buckets of income generating tasks when you're trying to get up off the, the, the ground with your property business or property investment business, okay? The income generating tasks are finding deals and raising finance. Finding deals, raising finance, you should only be doing tasks that surround those two particular areas. The point is, guys, consistency with them all is key. It is those elements blended together, guys, that I believe are the predominant traits of what makes for someone who is successful or making progress as a property sourcer versus Joe Bloggs, who's not seeing progress, okay? 
it are it's those traits so three personality traits coupled with graft you know i do not believe it's intelligence i do not believe it's education i do not believe it's coming from a silver spoon background and having a financial leg up so to speak i believe and this is my opinion that it's pure grit I believe that it's an insatiable hunger. I believe it's an incredible determination to do what needs to be done within your business on a daily occurrence, long after the motivation to do it has left you and your motivation will leave you on more than one occasion throughout the course of this journey. It just will, okay? But it's doing all those things with the three traits that I mentioned tonight with commitment, with conviction, with conviction and consistency. I'm really, really keen, guys, to hear your thoughts on this. OK, you know, I'm sure we'll all have lots of different opinions. OK, and um, we'll have lots of different viewpoints on what makes for a successful progression on your property sourcing journey, you know, leave me your comments guys so if you're watching this live or if you're watching this on replay leave me your comments tell me what your thoughts what your opinions are and you know let's have a healthy debate about it that's what that's what i want to do with this let's have a healthy debate and figure out what do you believe makes for um successful progress on your property sourcing journey so guys i promise you short sharp hopefully they have been actionable points I am really, really, really buzzing to have kicked off episode number one tonight of the Property Sourcing Show. I will be back every Wednesday night at the exact same time, 7.30, live inside the community with short, sharp, actionable, implementable, is that a word? Points that you can take forward on your property sourcing journey. If you feel that this show will be useful to absolutely anybody that you know on the first 0 to 12 months of their journey, get them in the group and let's have a party. Have a great night, guys. Bye.